Listen to what David says here. In Psalm 22, listen to the cry of David, a man after God's own heart. Remember, God himself said that this child David, he's a man after my own heart. Imagine that. And listen to what he says here in Psalm 22. He says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. And every night I lift my voice and I find no relief. He is in a struggle. He can't feel the presence of God. He's trying and calling, but he just can't seem to feel God. But then he says in verse 3, he says, yet. He says, despite this he says I still know he says yet you are holy and thrown on the praises of Israel he says even though I'm in this struggle even though I can't feel you even though I feel like I'm just groaning for help and I and I can't hear you he says you're holy you are who you say you are verse 4 our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them you saved them when they cried out. He says, I trust you, God. Even though I can't feel you right now, even though I can't see you right now, I trust you, just like our ancestors did. He says in verse 9, You have brought me out of safety from my mother's womb. Verse 10, I was thrust into your arms at my birth, and you have been my God since the moment I was, bo I was born. David is struggling here. David's in trouble, but he says, my God is who he says he is. My God will always be who he says he will be. And that even though he says, Lord, I cry out every night for you. I, I still can't feel you, but I don't trust my feelings. He says, Lord, I yet, even though I feel this way, you are holy. You are holy. Verse 11, David says, do not stay so far away from me for trouble is near and no one else can help me. See, David knows something, that even though he's in this struggle, he doesn't go back to the things of the world because he knows something. He says, no one else can help me. David knows that God is his only hope. God is his only help, that nothing else will satisfy nor fulfill him. See, when we get into that position, when, when we get into David's position and we say, God, I, I keep crying out to you, I can't feel you, I can't see you, we go to other things. We seek other things, money, sex, drugs, anything. It could be as simple as movies. It could be as simple as our friends and family. We go to seek other things, but no, God sa or David says, no, you know, I know that no one else can help me. So I, I, I'm just gonna come to you. Even when I feel this way, I still know that no one else can help me but you. And I know that you are still holy, enthroned on the throne of Israel. And I know you are the God that my ancestors trusted and therefore I will trust in you because since birth you have brought me forth in safety. Verse 14, my life is poured out like water. All my bones, all my bones are out of joint and my heart is melting like wax within me. D David is so fearful that his heart is melting like wax. Verse 15, my strength has dried up. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. Verse 16, my enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. Verse 17, I can count all my bones. Why? Why do you think? Because he was so hungry, so starving, he could count all his bones. After all this, verse 19, O oh Lord, do not stay far away from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to my aid. Verse 22, Despite all this, he says, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. Praise the Lord and all who fear him. Honor him, all your descendants of Jacob. Jacob, Show him reverence, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not ignored or belittled the suffering of the needy. He has not turned his back on them, but he listens to the cries of help. I will praise you in the great assembly. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. The poor will eat and be satisfied. All who seek the Lord will praise him. The hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and 
return to him, and all the families on the nations below will bow before him. For royal power belongs to the Lord, and he rules all the nations. Remember, this is David who starts out, God, God, where are you? I can't feel you. I can't find you. Psalm 27, 4. David asks for one thing. One thing I ask from the Lord, he says. He doesn't ask for money. He doesn't ask for anything. A spouse. He doesn't ask for children. One thing I ask for the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for all of my days, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek Him in His temple. David says, there's nothing, nothing in this earth that can satisfy. There's nothing else that I can do. But one thing I ask God, that I may dwell in His house and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek Him in His temple. David is a man after God's own heart, and despite his struggles, despite everything, he says, one thing I ask, I don't even ask to be delivered from this, one thing I want, God, one thing I want, Father, is that I may dwell with you in your house, and that I may see your beauty, God. Nothing else satisfies. Psalm 84:10. David says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. He says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. He says something so profound here. He says, there is not a place I would rather be. Even if I could have 1,000 of my best days on earth, if I could have 1,000 days of pure fleshly pleasures, it is better to be in your house for one day my Father, my Lord, my King. Take me to your throne room, Father. That's what David says. In other words, he says, Father, take me to where you are. He says, I want to be with you where you are. He says, despite what I feel, despite what I don't feel, despite what I see and can't see, oh God, will you take me where you are? Will you bring me to the place of, of where you are? I want to be with you. I want to see you. And he makes a statement, better is one day in your courts than a thousand days anywhere else. Even the best of the best days would not compare to one day in the courts of the Father, where everything is made whole, where everything is made complete, where everything is pure and righteous, and the Son of God takes away the sins of many, and we behold the Lamb on the throne of God, and He takes away every tear, every sickness, and every pain, and He renews your strength, and he brings you safely into his kingdom. There's not a place we'd rather be. And if that's you today, if you're like David struggling, pay attention to everything else he says. Yet God is holy, always enthroned on the throne of Israel. He is who he says he is. He can do what he says he can do. He is our God and he is full of love and grace and mercy. And today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of joy because our God is still God.